Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and in this video we're going to be showing a method of using JSON to communicate between different scripts in FileMaker in a way that's really efficient and very flexible and really easy to maintain um, complex systems that do different things. One of the things we do often at AppWorks is we have a lot of name matching for our public health projects. This is something that you probably have in a lot of different industries. So let me just give, me, give you a quick demo of that. So over here we have um, a table that has our sort of master index of a bunch of names. In this sample set we have uh, 46,900 of them. And what I want to do is I get an incoming record like from a doctor or from a laboratory. And I want to know if this person's in my database and how close they are. Um, so, for example, let's say I get one and I and the date of birth is, I don't know, 4492, something like that. So if I get do run a search, it will come up, and the script that I'm going to show you in a minute actually does this really complex uh, configurable search um, over here on the master set of names to come back with a score, and it tells me how good that search was. So first of all, let's take a look at what this script looks like. Um, I'm going to go into scripts workspace and see it's really just a handful of lines of code and all it's doing is is getting some JSON from my current starting point which is a, a database called fake names and it grabs information like the first name the middle name the last name and then it takes that whole string of JSON and it calls a script called central search and it sends that JSON to that script then Central Search is going to just pass me a bunch of JSON as a result. That's what we get here. And then if the result is zero, meaning I got no names match, then it shows me that. But otherwise, it actually shows me um, and interprets that JSON using uh, the function called JSON get element. And it just grabs a bunch of bits of data from that JSON. This could be to stick it in direct fields. So for example, I probably would have like a matching person ID field or something like that. And I would, I'd really want to stick that there. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just sticking it all in one big field so we can see and, and play with it and kind of see how it works. Okay, so let's run this script and see how it works and how fast it runs. Um, so we saw that a second ago. If I clear it out and run it again, I'll see what we get. And um, I'll show a little bit about the flexibility of what this script does. So for example, we see the date of birth here is 3-2-1980. If I put in here 2-3-1980, so that's a little bit closer, but still wrong. What this is going to do is it's going to say, oh, it has a higher score. The score is 85.3. It was 84 point something. But that's really, it doesn't tell me why. And I want to know why. So let's take a look at that script running again. And we'll see that one of the things we get when it runs, um, I'll just skip past it because we're going to look at it in a second, is we get a, we get a big block of code called result. And in the result, there's a part of it called message. And this tells me exactly what happened, why it gave me the result that it did. There's some other things that I might also not care about. I might care about like the number of results that matched, um, phone number and some other fields that I might not actually be visible on the screen. But I really, really care about for the moment message. So I'm gonna go to this script and I'm gonna modify it so that when the result pops into this field here. I want to see message. So I'm just going to go to this JSON. I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to change it to, from score to message. And then I'm going to grab the JSON element called message. Okay. Now when I run it, my result actually will have that message in there telling me that the, the year, the DOB year is, um, uh, the DOB year is correct, but the month and day are switched. Um, I guess. I'm not sure that message is exactly right. But anyway, you see what I mean. And if I change it and to fix it to be even more correct, like 3 2 1980, and I run my search again, the score is going to go up from 85.3 all the way up to 93.9 .9 because now everything matches perfectly. So that's a much higher match. It could even be higher. I could get address and phone number and a bunch of other fields matching as well. But for the purposes of this, 93.9 is a very high score. Okay, let's take a look again at that script. 
So here's my search script, just a handful of lines of code. This calls a really large one called central search. Let's take a quick look at that. So central search is long, it's 900 and something lines. And what it does is it does a search for different um, sets of fields. So here's one that does quite a few, first name, middle name, last name, uh, gender, DOB, and address. So um, it, it's also using JSON internally. This is where the message gets set, and this is where the score gets set. And then this uses JSON to say what it's going to be doing. And this calls yet another subscript called central search sub. And central search sub is the, actually the one that does the search. So this is a much shorter script. This just basically takes all of the JSON and does the work. So basically we have script A calling script B using JSON, script B calling script C using JSON, script C passes JSON back to B, which passes it back to A. Um, it's methods like this make it really easy to maintain and modify and tweak and iterate. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to add something new in here, like if I wanted to add a different set of fields in here, so for this is like also known as name, um, sex, date of birth, and address. If I wanted to say like, oh, I want also known as name, um, sex, date of birth, phone number, I could just take this set of code, duplicate it, make one small change, and then everything would just work. It just, it works really, really well for that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, this, this method has really paid a lot of dividends in a lot of the program that we do. Um, it does require that you get a little bit familiar with JSON, but really in FileMaker, the JSON features are very, very easy. They're very reliable. One note that you should definitely be aware of is they are case sensitive. So working with variables in FileMaker, those are not case sensitive, but JSON is definitely case sensitive. So be aware of that. Um, this is a great technique and I hope you find it useful. Thanks very much for your time.